Morning in the sea, a new day of fishing on the horizon. Brad Watkins and the crew of the Newfoundland Mariner got in last night to unload a catch of crab. A disappointing haul, but what Watkins really wants to fish is caught with his new hook and line system. This uh, boat was going to be rigged with uh, 20,000 hooks. We can shoot them in two hours, low labor intensive uh, compared to gill nets and what have you, and the quality is, is top notch. The system was intended for his old boat, the Atlantic Charger. But in 2015, while Watkins was ashore buying the gear, his crew had a catastrophe at sea. They survived, but the Atlantic Charger was lost. Watkins' insurance paid out big. He could have taken the cash and walked away from the fishery for good. Instead, he bought back in. So it's unfinished business for me. It's like the gear that I'm going to be putting on this boat, still in crates, a lot of money, a lot of investing, and a lot of deals done. And Mother Nature uh, put me on hold, and uh, I just felt like I had to uh, get back at it and finish off what I started. Now, the province's cod fishery may also be getting a second chance. Cod stocks are at their highest levels since the moratorium began 25 years ago. It's still a long way from a commercial fishery, but Watkins says if cod does come back, we need a new way to catch it. Uh, there's not so many fish in the ocean, so we got to capitalize and try to get the dollar value out of the fish. It's a feeling shared by fishermen and policy experts alike. We can't go back to the old days uh, where we took a, let's say we took a filet mignon from the ocean and turned it into hamburger meat, you know, the block market or the, or the, uh, or the mince market, right? Uh, again, that served a purpose in the day. That model is not going to work today. While this province has been out of the cod business, two neighboring countries have risen up in the global market, Norway and Iceland. Norway is the reigning king of cod, producing nearly a million metric tons per year. With that volume, Norway has cornered the market for cheap processed cod, the market Newfoundland and Labrador used to compete in. But if we can't beat Norway on price, many say we should follow Iceland instead and aim for quality. They harvest at the right time of the year. They're bleeding and gutting on board their vessels, whether it's a small inshore boat or a large factory vessel. With just 200,000 tons of cod per year, Iceland has oriented its fishery to produce a high-quality product that sells for a much higher price. But that's not all. By investing in technology, Iceland is finding uses for every part of the fish. They have a strategy right now in Iceland over the next five years to get more value from the traditional waste stream than from the fillet. That's the kind of model we need to look at in terms of full utilization, maximizing value per kilo of catch. That's really the terminology that, that's key in this discussion. But Watkins says there's another urgent discussion that needs to happen around the fishery. It's too political. Uh, our fishery is too political. The other countries that are successful, uh, Iceland, Norway, they, they, they're not socialism. Uh, they don't have that social aspect in their fishery. And, uh, the politics is taken out of it. They're run as businesses, not as, as a political way to get uh, elected or votes or, or to get people just to stay in the outports and use EI as a subsidy. It's a sea change from the cod fishery of the past. Can it work? Brad Watkins believes it can, and he has a lot riding on it. I've always had a passion that we can be more. We just need to pull together to be able to do it, to make it a proud uh, industry in the, in the province. Zach Gowdy, CBC News, St. John's.